Thank God you're here because today we're actually going to follow your advice and get out of Copenhagen. We're off to Ku. Let's go. You guys always tell us to get out and see more of Denmark, so we started looking for places to visit in Denmark beyond Copenhagen. As you know, we love Danish culture, history, and beer, so we decided to check out Ku, the seaside town at the end of the E train. Come along as we discover the lager, the witch, and the warship, and explore Denmark beyond Copenhagen in Ku. Once we arrived in Kua, we couldn't help but notice a giant brick tower in the middle of town. Standing in the middle of Kua is St. Nikolai's Church. This is one of the oldest buildings in Kua, and the church dates back to 1250 AD. It's a beautiful representation of Scandinavian church architecture and is an icon of Kua that can be seen from land or sea. And it was important you could see the church from sea because it actually served as a lighthouse for many years. What they would do is they would dip tar into an iron basket and light it, and this way seamen out in the bay could see where the land was. But St. Nikolai's Church isn't the only centuries-old building in Kua. So Kua is known for its old houses, and especially the half-timber ones. And now we're heading to Den Gamlehus, which is actually the oldest dated half-timber house in all of Denmark. It dates back to 1527, and you can see it over the door. The old house is also a small house. It only has a size of about 24 square meters, or 250 square feet. It got a 10 square meter extension in the 1700s, making it a little bit bigger than that. In 1908, the house was actually condemned to be demolished, but it was saved at the last minute by the National Museum in Copenhagen. And as small as it is, in the 1880s, a family with 10 children actually lived here. Today, it's part of the Children's Library. You've probably seen timber houses like this all over Europe, or at least in postcards and photographs. But one of the reasons they're so popular, and they were so popular in the Middle Ages, is because you could pick them up and basically take them to another destination. They were like the Ikea of the Middle Ages. The timber frames look cute, and they're very pretty now, but they were easy to take apart, dismantle, and, well, move on to another location. And that's part of the reason why you see so many here still standing today. And now we're in Kultur, which is the largest square in Denmark outside of Copenhagen. It has an area of 10,000 square meters, and it's Denmark's best preserved medieval town square. The market square is laid out in the Pomeranian model, and the entire town is situated around Kultur. Its location is no mistake. It's located at the mouth of a river which served as a harbor in the Middle Ages. Now, we don't have an idea of what it looked like exactly in the Middle Ages, but we can go back quite a bit in history and see what it looked like in 1865. Okay, we are now at Ku Minibu, which is a miniature replica of the city from the year 1865. So we're going to walk around and get to see a lot of the buildings that are still standing because Ku is one of Denmark's best preserved merchant cities. And they've done a fantastic job of preserving what the city looked like again back in the year 1865. So let's go check it out. This impressive attraction is made possible by the work of 140 volunteers that have been working for over 30 years. St. Nikolai's Church alone took eight years to build. Each structure is assembled with hand-cut bricks and pieces that are made one-tenth the actual size. All aspects of Ku's Minibu are designed with help from architects and archives provided by Ku Museum. It's even been visited by Queen Magleta II, who cut a few bricks herself. We were given a small tour inside the workspace by Lily, one of the many volunteers at Ku's Minibu. After literally walking through 1865 Ku, we wanted to learn more about the history of this area. A highlight of Ku is the Ku Museum. The museum contains artifacts dating from prehistory to today, chronicling the history of Denmark in this area. One of the highlights is a mass grave that was excavated just a few miles south of here that dates back to more than 6,000 BC. This grave shows that there was actually an advanced society here even millennia ago. These people are buried with a purpose, and based on their orientation and the gifts in the tomb, they had rituals and ceremony tied with death. The museum also focuses on other rituals up to the modern day. One of the key activities the museum participates in is an excavation of a nearby Viking settlement discovered in 2014. And there's also displays of coins and clothing that show different periods of Danish history. Yeah. 
One of the highlights of the Kua Museum is an exhibit on the Danabog, a ship that was blown apart by the Swedish Navy during one of the many Swedo-Danish wars in the 1700s. The Danabog was the flagship of the Danish Navy in the late 1600s and early 1700s. It was built as part of a modernization effort following Danish losses to Sweden in the mid-1600s. On October the 4th, 1710, the Danabog was part of the Battle of Kua Bay, a battle in the Great Northern War against Sweden. On that day, 600 sailors died when a fire on the ship caused its gunpowder stores to explode. The story of the Danabog came to life again during the Danish Romantic Age as a symbol of heroism in the face of great odds. Okay, now we're going to go check out the Koos Museum, which is a museum dedicated to art in public spaces. Let's go. It's one of the world's only museums that focuses on, well, art in public spaces. One of the museum's highlights is Tapestry Hall. It displays one-to-one -one sketches that artist Björn Nöga designed for the Queen herself. These were the sketches that inspired the tapestries that now sit in Klesenbo Palace. The yellow building behind me may not look that old, but it actually dates back to the 1500s. In fact, it's Rojos, or Kuz City Hall, and it's the oldest continuously operating city hall in the country of Denmark. So while it has that distinction, there's something a little bit more interesting about the building, and that's because it was the site of Denmark's most famous witch trials, the Kuh Huskus. These trials took place between 1608 and 1615, and they led to the execution of up to 20 women who were burnt at the stake. It began in 1608 as just simple rumors, and soon accusations of sorcery began to fly around the city. In 1612, a wealthy merchant named Hans Baxter accused Johanna Toms of having sent Satan into his house. To the court, he claimed that the devil had been present in his house for four years. In 1608, his wife Anna had heard the sound of a hen one night. They had seen the devil in various shapes in the house. One of their maids became sick, and no one wanted to sleep over anymore. During the trial, several witnesses confessed about accidents that had taken place after arguments with Johanna. She was described as verbal and courageous. Must be a witch, right? She eventually confessed and pointed out four other women. One of them, named Meta, confessed to having met the devil in the shape of a rat. The maid of Johanna, named Kirsten, said that Johanna had made her urinate in the baptismal bowl at church, and for this, Kirsten was burnt. Another woman, Anika, pointed out five women before she was burnt, and after this, seven more were burned at the stake between 1613 and 1615. Another two killed themselves, one in prison and one when she was heard that she was going to be arrested. This sad part of Ku's history is memorialized with a plaque just outside of Kutor, and you can see it here. With all this crazy witchcraft, we needed to escape this history and return to the nature that defines Ku. So just south of the Kua main town is Kua O, or Kua Stream. This is a nice little walking path along the way and is what connects to the southern part of the city. The stream itself has a lot of historical importance. That's kind of what made Kua a great place for a harbor and market town when it was founded hundreds of years ago. Now it's just a beautiful place to walk and relax. For centuries, the stream has been crossed by the Kua Bridge, first made of wood, but it's been made of stone since 1637. The original harbor was actually near here, so the ships could dock and pass goods quickly to the market square. But the stream is now important because it leads to the Baltic Sea, or the Östersund in Danish. Kua is defined by the sea. It sits along the Kua Bucht, or Kua Bay, which is a natural respite in the Baltic Sea. It's always been a strategic location. It sits just south of Copenhagen and provides a natural defense along the Baltic Sea. Lots of sea battles have happened here. A couple major ones happened against the English in the 1800s and many against the Swedes in the 16th and 1700s. The water is also why Kua exists right here. Kua O, or the Kua Stream, creates a natural harbor here, which has always made it a natural place for a market town. This natural harbor turned into a real harbor in 1411. Within a few years, it became one of the best harbors in all of Denmark. So the heart of Kua is the Kua Harbor. The harbor is why Kua exists in the first place. Since its establishment as a market town, Kua Harbor has been the connection between Kua the town and the rest of the world. In fact, the motto of the city is Porten to Östersund, which means the gateway to the Baltic Sea. 
and Kua still is that way, as the harbor is still a major center for all kinds of traffic going out to ports all over the world. We also come to Kua Harbor because it's where one of our favorite breweries is located, Brewery Bronstein. Bronstein took over a distillery that was for actually Baltimore in the U.S. They packed it up, moved it over here, and now have a distillery that's in operation and a really good brewery that makes phenomenal beers that we love. And they're located right here on the harbor, offering a fantastic view of Kua Harbor and a great place to have a pint when you want to come to Kua. Well, thanks for coming along to Kua and joining us for this awesome day trip from Copenhagen. We had a really fun time. I hope you enjoyed the video. Please give it a like so you can see more just like it. And don't forget to subscribe so you can be notified every time we have new content come out on Thursdays or do live stream on Tuesdays. You have to hit the bell to get those notifications. So don't forget. And we're going to close out with a Bronstein Vil, uh, which is the wheat beer. Vil. Yeah, we'll go with that. Skull. Skull. Good.